Welcome back, welcome back guys, and thank you very much for staying with us. I hope you are still enjoying. This is Tenfold Life, a show that is specifically created to help you to multiply your content knowledge and mathematics tenfold and more. If you think you like the sound of that, well, you can actually get access to even more by downloading our Tenfold Education app, which is available on iOS, also on the Play Store. Just look for Tenfold Education. It will help you and give you access to awesome stuff, such as videos, what we're doing here. You can stream live the show. You can actually watch what we're doing now or even other videos that we pre-recorded and a lot of other exciting content from grade 10 until grade 12. It's awesome, guys. I promise you, you will never regret taking that decision. We are continuing, however, with our show, which is proudly brought to you by Liberty. A big shout out to Liberty for sponsoring our show. We really appreciate everything that they do for us, guys. We are able to bring you this because of them. Right, we are continuing with our analytical geometry. Remember this week, we're still doing analytical geometry. Uh, and then next week, we'll be moving on to something else. So send us your questions on WhatsApp and uh, also on the app. You will actually stand a chance to win awesome prizes. Without any waste of time, I'm actually going to say this to you. I am happy to announce that happiness has won a 19-inch TV for just sending us uh, a question, which is a question that is based on analytical geometry. If you also want to win, it's just as easy as that. Take yourself a video where you're asking us one question based on the topic that we're doing on that particular week. Who knows, you might be the lucky person that we're actually giving this awesome prize. All right, let's go and hear what uh, Happiness had to say in order to win uh, this awesome prize. Hi, Tenfold Education. My name is Happiness Hadebe from Amazing Grace and I would like you guys to help me with a question under analytical geometry. Which says, what is the equation of the altitude from C onto AB produced? <sighs> right, nice question indeed. I'm actually excited about this question because there's a, they, they use a word, a particular word that you guys are not so familiar with. If you use old textbooks, like those ones with uh, pages that are a little bit brown, you get to access these kinds of words such as the altitude. It's not actually a popular word, it just means height. Perpendicular height, to be exact. All right, cool. So I want us to look at it together and then we analyze it together and see what we can actually make uh, out of this question. Let's check it and see what it says to us. It says, refer to the figure below. There's a figure that is currently drawn nicely for us. And then we are asked to actually work out something interesting based on the given information. The given, the given information says to us the vertices of triangle ABC, are A which is negative three is to nine, B 11 and nine, and C which is 13 is to one. So we can clearly see those vertices nicely uh, sketched on our Cartesian plane. All right, the first question, what is the first question saying to us? Right, the first question is saying to us that we need to, let's see what it says. All right, there we go. It says to us, what is the equation of the line AB? What is the equation of the line AB? Now, if you look at the straight line AB, before we even analyze this further, guys, I need you to have something very interesting in mind. There are actually three types of lines that you can get in a Cartesian plane. There's a line that is a horizontal line that only cuts the y-axis. A line that only cuts the y-axis and has got the same y value across it will be y equals to whatever that value is. If it's cutting y at 7, the equation is y equals 7. If it's cutting at 6, the equation is y equals to 6 because it has nothing to do with x. It's just cutting x. So that line is the line y equals to whatever the y value that it cuts. There's another line that cuts the x-axis, which is called a vertical line. A vertical line that cuts x at 1 is simply uh, going to have the equation x equals 1. If it cuts x at 7 again, it's going to be x equals 7. Whatever the x value that you're having on that particular line will be the equation of that line because it has nothing to do with y. It's only concerned with cutting the x value at one point. The third line is a line that cuts both the x and the y axis. It can be an increasing line or it can also be a decreasing line, right? So that line will be a line that will have both y and x and it will have the equation y is mx plus c. Now, as we have those in mind, I want us to use that to try and see which one of those three lines is actually uh, appearing in front of us at the moment. If you look at point O, something interesting is happening there. The y value of A is 9, right? And the y value of B is also 9 for whatever x value that we are dealing with. And the x values are not important at this present moment. What I see is that this line cuts a at 9, it also cuts B at 9, and it's a straight line, so definitely that actually lies along the line Y is equal to 9. 
That's basically the equation of that line. Full stop, nothing special. Now let's say you wanted me to convince you that indeed this is the case. I will try to do it the traditional way that you guys normally do things using y is mx plus c and c. I'll be not going to end up with the equation y cross 9. Now the correct way of doing what you guys are normally used to is working out the gradient which is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 which then in this case it's going to be 9 minus it's going to be 9 right minus 9 everything divided by 11 minus minus 3 right and this is just simply going to simplify to 0 over 14 which is going to give us a gradient of 0. now when you use the equation y is mx plus c your gradient is 0 i might put 0 here maybe use the coordinates of b there by putting 11 and putting the y value as 9 plus c that's going to be 0 so clearly your c value comes out as 9 therefore y is mx plus c right it's going to be um zero x plus nine anything times zero is just simply going to be zero so the equation again becomes just y equals to nine Zim very simple stuff you're getting a gradient of zero you don't have a gradient so the y value is equal to nine all the time so that's the equation of the line a b right moving right along to the next question the next question says to us that we need to actually uh, find out uh, the equation of the altitude there's the weight altitude now, the word altitude just means perpendicular, right? Perpendicular height. That is basically what the altitude is. So we want to draw a line that is perpendicular to uh, the direction of AB. Okay, so if I continue the line AB, if I continue the line AB, it was going to go like this. So we want this line that is going to be perpendicular to that particular line. This is basically your altitude. Now, if your altitude has to be perpendicular to that line AB, once more, it will share the same x coordinate as point c because it is along the same point from c going straight to the line ab it will have the same coordinate as ac which is actually the same as the x value you're going to get here of 13. therefore the equation of that line they're asking you again is just x equals 13. very simple again straightforward we are testing your knowledge of um, horizontal lines and vertical lines the other one is y equals 9 because 9 is the y value that is always the same the other one is x equals 13 because it is always 13 along that line that is perpendicular to the line a b all right moving right along to the last uh, the second last part of the question it says to us if the altitude of c meets a b at point d all right so let me draw that if i draw that line there's the altitude again meeting the line AB at uh, some random point. The coordinate of that random point is point D, according to the examiner. We need to write down the coordinates of D. Clearly, X is 13 there, and the Y value is simply 9. A very straightforward question. Not complicated at all. Very nice and easy for you guys to see what is going on. I hope you're learning something out of this. Right, let's move on to the last part of the question. All right, the last part says we need to now calculate the area of a triangle. Now, this is a very simple question. The formula for the area of any triangle is area um, equals to half the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. This is if you've got a triangle that is a right angled triangle. In this case, it's not right angled, but we do have the perpendicular height. That is basically what is important for us. So what you need to know is how long is this base and how long is that perpendicular height we'll be talking about right here perpendicular to the line ab where you have a point d lying there now from a to b it's from the point 11 right it is basically 11 minus minus 3 this is the length of the line ab which is equals to 14 units and then the other line is the line cd remember there's point d here on this particular line so cd is equal to uh, x here i mean y there minus y here it is 9 minus 1 which is equal to 8 so this is simply going to be half of the base which is equal to 14 multiplied by the altitude which is the perpendicular height of 8 half of uh, 14 is 7 times 8 if you multiply them you are just simply going to end up with a value of 56 square units 56 square units. Very nice and simple question indeed. Thank you very much for that question. I hope you learned a lot about vertical and horizontal lines and you understand how to work with this. We are continuing with all the awesome work that we have for you guys. We are going to a theory video that will help you beef up your content in terms of analytical geometry before we continue and have fun on all the analytical geometry that we have for you on today's show. So watch this.
Inclination of a line. The inclination of a line is a positive angle measured anti-clockwise between a line and the horizontal axis. Angle theta is between the straight line y equals 2x minus 1 and the horizontal axis. Therefore, theta is the angle inclination of the line. To calculate the value of the angle theta, we use the trig ratio tan theta. By definition, tan theta equals y over x, and we calculate the gradient of a straight line graph as the change in y over the change in x. Therefore, to calculate the angle of inclination or slope of a line, we equate the tan of the angle to the gradient of the line. So, to work out the angle theta of the line y equals 2x minus 1 equals, we equate tan theta to the gradient of the line, which is 2. The tangent of theta is 2. We need to find the size of theta. Using your calculator, solve the trig equation to find theta. Enter second function tan and the ratio 2 on your calculator and press equals, and you will get theta equals 63,43 degrees, which is the angle of inclination of the line y equals 2x minus 1. Isn't that cool? That is awesome, guys. That is just awesome. It actually tells you that um, it supplements what you do in class. If you just... Um, do not have access to an educator or you probably don't understand the work that you're reading on your own in the textbooks. Once you have this app, it will help you. Proudly uh, brought to you by Liberty, guys. Do make sure you download the app. It will help you. It's got awesome content that helps you to build your work from grade 10, 11, and 12. So do make sure you actually watch that. Um, we are continuing with analytical geometry. Remember, we're still doing analytical geometry. So please do send us your questions on analytical geometry um, using our WhatsApp plan. Also, even using the app, we'll be more than glad to assist you guys to build a content on that. We are continuing again to take more questions from you. This is another awesome question that comes from from Mamusa, let's go check it out. Hi, um, my name is Mamusa Makhajani from Progress Comprehensive High School, and we uh, we just did our cross nighting at Progress Comprehensive High School, and here's our question as follows. I would like to thank our dearest teacher, Mr. Gekana, for helping us with our session today. And I would like to send a shout out to my mom and my family and my classmates, my beautiful Ooh. classmates. Yes! Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Rodrigue. Thank you. Wow, wow. That's actually a lot of excitement. I'm actually. Uh, uh, getting out of that video very awesome stuff it's nice to see that you guys are feeling the exam fever preparing yourselves for the exams it's very important for you to work in study groups work together if you can't get things on your own somebody in your class probably understands what is going on so these people are organizing a cross night session quite awesome indeed if it's just safe for you guys please do it if it's not then always use your daily sessions and work together in groups assist each other you'll actually work uh, and try to help each other and benefit and grow and be mathematically competent as you want you guys to be so now let's see if we can help this uh, beautiful group uh, on this particular interesting question that they sent to us. So like I said, I want us to look at it together and then after looking at it, let's see how we can analyze it and unpack it for you to understand what is going on. Right, um, it says to us that a variable point, there's a particular point P, is located such that the numerical value of the distance. So allow me to highlight the important words there. The first important word I'm seeing here is the word distance. Um, from the y-axis is equal to the gradient of PA, where A is the point 2 is to 1. Now, we need to calculate the equation of the locus. Ooh, locus. Big word. I don't know if you guys have seen this word before. It's been a while since I last saw this word. Locus of point P. Right, now, if you don't know what the word locus is, don't panic. It's very simple. You're watching 10 Full Life. We are definitely going to help you guys to make sense of what the word locus means. You haven't seen it in analytical geometry because it used to be used a lot in the old exams. The word locus just means a set of points that will satisfy a particular condition. A set of points that will satisfy a particular condition. Let me make an example. 
Suppose I wanted to put a particular point, right, to be the same distance from some point A and some point B. Then I would ask you for a set of points that will always be equidistant from A and also from B. Let's put that here in a simple little sketch for you guys to see. If I gave you the coordinates of A and said A is here, and then I told you that B is here, right? If A and B are here, and I want now some random point to be always, always the same distance from this point, you guys can tell me you can put it there. And the coordinates of P will always be X and Y because we want them to be general since there's infinitely many of them that can satisfy that particular condition. So A and B, you will see that it is actually in the middle of point A and point B. But somebody else can put it here so that from A to P, that distance is the same as the distance from B to P again. But somebody can say, I want it there where the distance from A to P, right? is the same as the distance from A and from B to P as well. So it can be anywhere along this line. And if you had to work out this beautiful locus, you will get the equation of a straight line since those points X, Y, X, Y, X, Y are going to always fall on some line uh, that is actually given by what you're looking at now. So the locus can also be maybe in a circle. If I say for you, for, uh, for you if I say, if I ask you, imagine a particular point A, I want the locus of a particular point P that is always five meters away from point A. So five meters could be here, or it could be here, or there, or there. It can be anywhere, such that it forms a nice, beautiful circle. So there's a lot of points that could actually satisfy that particular condition. So let's see what is our condition. Our condition is that um, the numerical value of the distance from the y-axis must always be equal to the gradient of PA. Ooh, very nice. So the distance from the y-axis, I'm gonna draw the Cartesian plane here and I'll put the point A, which is the point here, with coordinates two is to one. Now the distance, right, from P to this particular point, like if I just have, for example, a point P there, if I work out the distance uh, from the y-axis there and say it's equal to one, it must actually give me the same gradient. When I work out the gradient of this line from A to P, it must be equal to the gradient of this particular line AP. So let's see what we can do with that information. Uh, according to this, our coordinates of A are basically two is to one. The coordinates of P is actually always equal to uh, X and Y. And the y-axis, right, the y-axis has got very interesting coordinates. The y value on the y-axis is always y, but the x value will always be 6. So our condition for our locus, the condition that we need to satisfy, right, sorry for that, is that the distance from the y-axis must be equal to the gradient of AP. So let's see how we can actually do that. So the distance, let's work out the distance of yp. yp, right, squared is um, the x value um, at p minus the x value on the y-axis squared plus the y value at p minus the y value on um, the y-axis, right, which is going to be x minus the y, the x value on p on the y-axis is always zero, uh, squared plus y minus y. And this simply gives us x squared, right, the y, uh, P squared is going to give us x squared. And if you simplify this further, you're just simply going to get that the distance yp is always equal to x. Now, on the other hand, the gradient of ap, right, is changing y over changing x. It is y minus 1, y minus 1 over x minus 2, which is x minus 2. Now, our condition is that this, right, needs to be equal to this gradient that you're looking at there. So I'm going to equate them. x equals to y minus 1 over x minus 2. If you simplify this by cross multiplication, you'll have x squared minus 2x is y minus 1, which when you simplify further, it's just going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to y. Therefore, y can just be written as x minus 1 squared. That is the equation of the locus as defined or required by this question. It's a nice question indeed. Very nice. It's been a while since I last saw the word locus. If you get it, just get the condition and satisfy the, co the condition. We are still coming back with a lot of uh, great content. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We've got awesome content that is coming your way. We'll be right back after this.